How's it going everybody? Bob Henson here from Elevated Prints 3D. Here to talk to you about a dope little machine, but first I've got my business friend here, and... Hi guys, my name's Bill, also part of Elevated Prints 3D. Yes. Very excited I'm Bill here. We uh, split the print on this one, we decided to each have it for about a week. And uh, if you're interested in checking out what this printer can do from XBICO, the X3S, then stay tuned and we'll check it out. Thanks for staying tuned to check out this printer. We're really excited to show it to you. Like I said earlier, me and Bill split this printer for about a week each, just so that way we could each kind of test it and give you two sides of the story on it. Because there might be parts I really like and there might be parts that he really likes. We wanted to just cover all of it for you. So let's just kind of dive right into it. It was a super easy build. I don't know, I mean, he was here helping me print it. We're gonna show you guys the time lapse of it. Um, but yeah, it was a super easy build. What did you think about it when we were building it? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it was a really easy build. It was really just putting this the gantry, uh, up, gantry on up on top and then four bolts. And from there, that was about it, wasn't it? I mean, we, we adjusted some, we tightened the belts. Yeah, yeah, um, the belts were super loose. Yeah, very loose. <laughs> very loose. What was strange is we did notice uh, there was a little bit when you moved the... It doesn't seem like it's there anymore. The axis, yeah. Yeah, but when you moved that, uh, it would, um, there'd be kind of like a, a click almost. A click, yeah. It was like one of the Stop. wheels were flat, but none of the wheels were flat though. It was really odd. It was, yeah, you would push it and it would go like, yeah. Same with this axis, too, yeah. Both of them did that. But uh, once the machine was fired up and running, it didn't seem to have any effect on the print quality or the way that it was moving at all. So. Yeah. Yeah, it really turned out great. Uh, I'm really happy with it. Very easy build. Um, well, a couple of things that I like to point out about it is it's got the stronger springs, which help a lot with the bed leveling, so that way it doesn't come out of level. I personally haven't re-leveled it. Did you have to do any uh, leveling? I did do a little bit of leveling, but that was only because we I, it. I we moved the print, yeah, the yeah. bubble printer, um, and I felt like it was necessary, but it would hit hardly adjusted, even through a car ride, so. Okay, yeah. yeah, no, it's a great little printer. We've really been happy with it so far. Um, no hiccups with it. We've got some really great prints out of it, which we're really excited to show you. Um, definitely is a, it's, I'm really surprised by it. If you compare it to another printer, it's, it's compared to the Edner 3, to be honest with you. And I think you can even compare it to the Pro because there's a lot of features on it, which are really nice. Um, yes. One feature that I really like is the filament runout detection. Not a lot of printers come with that stock. It seems to be something that's coming more standard which I think is a really great thing because, you know, filament breaks, it happens. And it's nice that it actually does work, but we did have it overwork is the problem with it. The uh, piece on the inside, the little detector, was a little bit not pushed out enough. And so it was whenever the filament would kind of rotate slightly, it would turn the sensor on and off and just stop your print for no reason. And that was an easy adjustment. What did you do to fix that? I actually pulled the whole, so I pulled these two screws just right here off. I pulled the whole unit off. And then it, I used my fingernail just to pull pull it apart. There was no, it was not difficult to, to get apart at all. It was okay. very, very easy. And then once I had that apart, I it exposed the switch and um, I just noticed it was pushed out a little bit. So I pushed it back in and kind of bent it just a smidge so that it would create a little bit more contact. And then I ran, did some test runs with filament through it and clicked on when the filament was in and it clicked off when the filament was out. And, that's that's what it's designed to do. So. Yes, <laughs> it, worked, it worked properly after I was able to uh, just just con just uh, reconfigure it just a little bit. Yeah, and one thing I did notice is even when it did pause the print, it would go right back where it was supposed to be. There was very few times where you could actually see where it did start and stop because sometimes you have issues of the print not going back to the proper spot. It rehomed it correctly. It did everything that it was supposed to do. The filament sensor was just a little squampus. Mm -hmm. It was pretty much it. Um, any other features that are you would like to talk about? One thing that I that was a kind of a, a disappointment to me is that I was unable to locate a baby Z feature on the printer. Oh, okay. So when yeah, I, I didn't, I when didn't. I tried to, uh, so you know, I, I don't think I would have had to relevel the bed had, uh -huh. had I been able to just I baby Z step it. Yeah. So having that not be um, a feature is kind of a downside, but um, yeah. Yeah. Other than that, I think it's it's. It's a really nice, stout little printer. Yeah, it doesn't have a BL Touch or anything like that. Um, I have been talking to the sales rep from uh, XVICO, 
and they said that in their in their next couple of firmware updates, if I believe right, they are going to be adding additional firmware to add a VL Touch to it for a lot easier compatibility. So it's nice to hear that they are keeping their firmware up to date and continually going, which is definitely a positive. Um, anything else you want to cover? Do you want to jump to the prints? We can jump to the prints. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you want to start with the Abraham Lincoln bus? Kind of talk about why you want to print that one. So uh, we printed this Abraham Lincoln bust. He's a really great one. A great reason that we wanted to print him is because of the detail with the beard, the ears, and we wanted to do a print that was going to be over 12 hours long. This was a 14, 16 hour, 16 hour print, even better. We just wanted to see how the machine would handle with continual use for a longer period of time. Because some people just print minis, you know, and that's great. Some people use this for industrial use. That's also great. And some people are going to use it just for hobbyists. And we want to make sure we can kind of hit every category with that to show you guys the proper prints. Um, some slight layer lines. You were mentioning you thought it might have been sunk trying to clog. I think it might have clogged a little bit. You can see there on the right side of his head, there's some under extrusion in the hair by the ear. Um, and I think it's a mixture of two things. I think it's a mixture of cooling cooling issue maybe, and then also uh, a, a clog there. I think it hit a clog. Yeah. It did hit the details really well. I mean, you can even see the, the pupils eyes, in his yeah, eyes. Yeah, that's I what mean, I was just looking at. It's really, really nice detail. Um, the model itself is great, obviously. Whoever designed this did a good, great job, but yeah. um, but the printer did a great job printing it. So, Wow, it's a great little bust. Um, next, let's talk about... We did quite a few prints. I want to take up the Mandalorian. Yeah. We did the Mandalorian No Mando. Support Challenge. Yeah. And uh, as you can tell, we have two Mandos and one successful Mando. Um, this did break off, and uh, you can kind of see here where the nozzle stuck into it. It's a pretty common thing for this print, to be honest with you. There were no supports. There were no rafts or anything like that. It handled it pretty well. I really like the back side. You can see how smooth it is. There was some retraction issues that we eventually started tuning in more and more. You know, with new printers, you got to figure it out. Um, but this is the complete Mando. So as you can see, it actually did a really good job. All of the detail in the vest, really great on the belt. Utility belt looks great. Yeah, yeah. He, it, it's a great print, and I really like the underside. You can see how the supports managed, or without the supports, it managed pretty great. You know, it's just small overhang, but you know, for something that's that extreme of an overhang, I, I think it's I was fine. truly impressed. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's a great little one. Um, the next one that we got here, if you follow me on Instagram at Elevated Prince 3 d you would have already seen this, so don't be afraid to follow me on Instagram. That way you can continue to stay up to date with all the fun things. You get a little bit of the backside view from what's going on and all the other little things that's going on. Um, but this is the Witch Tower, or the Watch Tower, I think, actually. And this print, it... it it did a great job. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> it looks great, guys. It It is really nice. Some slight stringing, but the details on the rock mm -hmm. really just bring it all together. You know, I've resin printed this a couple times, and it's pretty comparable. I'm not even going to lie. We did this in Hatchbox Blue. That was really great. And then we wanted to test base mode. The reason for that is because if there's any Z-Rod movement or anything like that, a uh, base mode will show it because it's just one layer going around and I wanted to pick this hexagon one because it, it's a lot of angles that it has to move in order to print this and wow I gotta say this is probably my favorite print that it's done and it it's a great little base it it really turned out great some slight like little not delamination but almost where it looks like it kind of pressed in a little bit on the inside but other than that I mean this is perfect yeah gorgeous yeah no issues at all um, and then we'll kind of dip into these guys real quick so this was a full height Z test. It kind of wiggles slightly when it's moving, and we wanted to see if that was going to cause any issues. And it did ever so slightly right here. Um, you can kind of see that little lip yeah, right there. Yeah, little lip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's not anything that's going to. It's the top here too. Yeah. But again, yeah. It's not nothing too mock major, you know. And now it's full of prints on the inside. <laughs> And we'll kind of talk about these. Um, Bill printed these guys, so let's let him talk about these just a little bit and how you printed them on the build plate and the orientation. Yeah, so for these guys, I just did one on each corner. And the reason for that... And the squirtle in the middle. This is a broken Pikachu. Yeah, Pikachu broke, unfortunately. It happens. Um, 
but this was before I had fixed the uh, the filament sensor, so um, there was some stopping and starting on this print. Probably about four times in total, it had stopped and wow. then restarted. Yeah, I had to restart it. Um, so I think that's also part of potentially why the integrity of the Pikachu was a little weaker too, just because it had to continually stop, come come back, and yeah. do it again. Um, but uh, this is how I printed them, and I did so because I wanted to test the uh, levelness, I guess you could call it, of the bed. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure um, that all four points and the center um, could could be printed on at the same time. Um, it worked great. It worked really good. I didn't have any adhesion issues. The bed um, adhesion was pretty good for you, then. Yeah, the bed adhesion was great. Um, this was right after I had, had re-leveled the bed, and it, and it turned out fine. I did have one uh, issue at first with one of the uh, feet on the Eevee, but with a minor adjustment, it was it was back in business. Nice. Yeah, nice. Back in business. So. Nice. Yep, and they all printed out pretty good. Uh, some retraction issues, obviously, as we mentioned before. I think that's probably going to be in, in most of these prints. Just trying to figure out what the proper settings are for it. Yeah, figuring it out. It takes some time to do that, so. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, those printed great. Then we got the other prints too. This one um, is from Undertale. It's a, a video game. And uh, I just wanted to ch test the overhang abilities on it, like on this scarf here. Um, I don't know if you want to hold that closer to the yeah. camera so they can see. Um, basically, I uh, had a little bit of issues with the overhang on there. Um, but other than that, it did really good. I printed this one with, uh, with uh, supports from um, Tree Supports with Kira. And it worked really well. Everything printed real nice. And, um, and which yeah. PLA was this? Uh, that was Hatchbox. Right? Hatchbox as well. Hey, look at Hatchbox that. White. Yeah. Hatchbox, you're doing something right. <laughs> yeah. And then this guy. We wanted to print a mini. We wanted to print a mini. We wanted to test the ability for that. It turned out really good. Um, Surprisingly really from, good. From what I think, yeah, from in my opinion. Uh, I didn't... I printed minis on my Ender 3 Pro. Um, they did not turn out this good. So I'll, I'll say that right off the bat. Um, it's I think got better cooling. I think it does have better cooling. I think yeah. it's a better cooling system. I think that's really what, what did it. It's not a perfect print by any means. Um, you don't really expect it to be with, with this small a fine, detail. Fine, fine detail. Very yeah, fine detail. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at how small. But it got the dagger. I mean, even the dagger. Yeah. And honestly, the supports were really easy to get off. It didn't break anything when I took them off. Um, it's a great little print. The printer's great. Yeah, it's a really good one. Yeah. I like it. The build plate's really flexible. Uh, yeah, the build magnetic plate. build plate is nice. I it, it sticks mm -hmm. and it pops off s super easy. Just like the Edner build plates, super easy to use. Yep. Cleans awesome. I just use rubbing alcohol to clean it. Nothing too fruity or fancy that I use. You know, it's it's nice. Um, any other things you just want to say about it? Kind of ending notes. I think for the price of, uh, I believe, one seventy nine ninety nine. Let me just double check. It fluctuates right. between that and two hundred. Yeah, you know, depending on where you're buying it from, uh, everybody has a little bit of a different markup. Yeah, but, everyone sells it at a different price. Yeah, but you know, yeah, for for the compare, yeah. I would say for the price point, it's very very compare. I mean, it's competitive. It's, it's super competitive. Oh yeah, and and I was super surprised at how well it performed versus the Edners. I mean, this is a brand that I hadn't heard a lot about until I just stumbled upon them and they contacted us. I think that they're really great. They're building a large following on their Facebook, which I've noticed I'm in a lot of their groups. A lot of people are super responsive, along with the uh, sales supports. They're very happy to help you out, which I noticed a lot. So shout out to you guys for doing that because it can make or break a printer company by the customer support. And I have seen that happen with other companies where they don't care about you. And you can tell these guys actually do. They're happy to help us out. They are always posting discount codes on their page and everything like that. So check them out. They're really great. Yeah, absolutely. I've been pleased with it. Me too. Yeah. Um, do I personally think this print will help elevate your life? I think to a sense. I mean, it depends on every printer is going to be different, what you're trying to get out of it. But if you're just trying to get into 3D printing, at $170, this is a very great price point to get into 3D printing. And you're getting a printer that performs. Yeah, and honestly, if you're if you're on the fence between an Ender or this, based on the price point, I honestly would go this route. I can say right after unboxing it, I truly felt like the parts 
are more qual are, are better quality right off the bat. Yeah. The parts for this uh, really they just stuck out to me. The filament sensor. The filament sensor I mean that's that's huge in my book. To be honest uh, with you. The extruding the extruder motor like everything just seems a little bit um, uh, just just slightly uh, yeah. superior. I mean quality. it's got the dual rails with the bigger rails just like the Edner Pro does. I mean, it, it's it's not too loud. It's the same same loudness. Yep. It doesn't have a Capricorn tube, but this tubing seems to be working great. Yep. I, yeah, I think it's a great little printer. It's a competitive printer. Yeah, for printer. sure. Yeah. Well, I think that's about it. Yeah. Perfect. Well, again, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check us out on Instagram and Facebook at Elevated Prints 3D. All of your support is super appreciated. We really appreciate you guys a lot. You're super awesome and keep elevating your lives and others around you and keep it groovy. See you guys next time. Bye.